Hello oh, there, it's uh, the uh, second Saturday of uh, July and it's turning out to be very warm. Just a little wander around, some of the jobs to catch up with. Uh, you've always got to look out for this sort of thing. We have had a lot of problem with the pears, um, still following on from the terrible uh, weather we had two years ago. And you can see this is a canker there. Uh, you always need to watch out for this sort of stuff. Seen canker, gone canker. Cut back, some way back into clean wood. This goes out to be uh, burned. Uh, yeah, pears are not looking too bad, but uh, again, we're still suffering from the failure to get on. Uh, we didn't get our um, pre-blossom spray on. Uh, combination things, too busy, weather wasn't good and uh, we were trying, we still are trying to minimise the um, amount of, um, of pest, uh, pesticide that we use. Uh, this doesn't always work out wonderfully well because um, uh, you know you try you cut it a bit too fine and you find one of the pests gets away with it. As you may recall we had a really bad hit from the pear midge earlier this year but it's not affected all varieties equally and we have got some lovely pears coming. Okay these are a bit scabby. Um, I'm doing some thinning, some of the operations I'm doing at the moment. Um, but I'm not, uh, you know, pears like this, if the tree isn't too heavy laden, I'm leaving them uh, because they obviously won't be any good to sell. Um, but we can uh, probably eat them ourselves um, or I might make some perry this year. That's another story. This is some um, burr hardy and these are looking really nice. Very nice indeed. I'm going to do a bit of supporting there. Because, you know a few places uh, we just got such a heavy crop but some of the uh, pears didn't crop anything at all uh, this year um, particularly the um, uh, the winter anellis this is a variety I've been praising very highly in recent times and I'll continue to do so it used to be very widely grown it's got really excellent natural keeping qualities so uh, this uh, variety um, suffered uh, one hundred percent loss due to the permage, and that's really sad. And uh, that was because we it blossoms very early. We did get a spray on; it was just enough to save most of the other pears. But uh, we had one hundred percent loss uh, through permage. Still, I snipped all the sick and dying pears off, and um, the tree is making a very good growth. It's had a barrow wheelbarrow load of manure. And here we are down to the uh, plum section. And um, these are ripening, this is opal, this is a plum you've heard me recommend. These were thinned very radically indeed. Every year we thin them and we never quite thin them as hard. Let's just count these, let's come out here with a ruler actually, I'm not going to do it now, but just count at maturity, looking at what looks like a good crop, what looks like a maximum crop, to work out how many uh, plums per foot. We've got here, what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twelve to a foot. And you know, eight probably would be better. Uh, but I'll come around with Julian, we'll take a look at that. Uh, yeah, the opal plum, I'll say it again, although I've said it before, I do recommend the opal plum uh, because uh, it does ripen about two weeks before Victoria. Mm. And that is edible. It's a little bit sharp and it's sweet enough. And you could pick them certainly at this stage, take them to market. Here's Victoria. Okay. You got a message? Remove the diseased hope. <clears throat> and you see the propping, he's being propped. Hazel, steaks propping up heavy weight branch breaking crops branch breaking crops and I need probably to cut a few more hazel props um, so again once again opal this is the plum opal supported for the avoid breaking of crops breaking of you can see that one split there. Uh, better pick that out. Not otherwise. And next to it, 
Victoria, which is a much more popular plum, better known, more widely planted than opal. So if you've got room for two plums, I plant opal and Victoria. If you've only got room for one, it's a toss up. But bear in mind the opal is ready sooner, about two weeks sooner. So it stands to reason then if you have one tree of opal and one of Victoria, you'll be able to enjoy plums for quite a, lo a longer period of time. And there is a lot to be said. I'll say one more thing about plums before I get off the subject. And that is if you've got a big surplus of plums, and even one tree will usually give you a big surplus, you may wish to make some plum wine. I'm not going to give plum wine recipes here, just to say that you will do better if you use some pectolytic enzyme or pectolase. You can order that from any home brew shop, but order it in advance of when you need it and use it according to the instructions. Okay, here's some um, success. I'm not going to say anything about the um, uh, vegetable patch. I've got some um, long keeping pumpkins coming on there. Hey, better watch out. I will say something about it, but yeah, <laughs> carrots, beans, stuff. Here's some grafting. It's coming on okay. I'll uh, just take, just loosen the, uh, uh, the sticky, uh, you know, the tapes there. This is butt. This is a pear, peri pear variety. It's been growing on three or four years. Uh, grafted variety butt. Uh, that's looking good. I tied this one up. This is something you may need to do um, when you get your um, grafting. Sometimes it'll make very long, very strong growth. If you're not careful, the wind may just catch it. So sometimes you might need to tie it up. Here's another. That's doing all right. This is quince A root stock, and here we've got uh, a um, cleft graft uh, peri pear variety, Blakeney red. Right, what else is going on? Yes, I know what I wanted to do. Just wanted a little meander around the uh, peace meadow or peace orchard project. Here's another uh, bit of grafting, the quince stock that's been grafted with um, a, a Meech's prolific quince. I made about five grafts on this one, only two have taken. Once they've been really well steadily established, growing away fine, um, I've removed, as you can see, I've removed the other ones, the nurse branches if you like, and the ones that didn't take. Uh, no, here any one of the two cleft grafts. That's interesting, that's what I grafted in. That one died, this one's growing. <laughs> hey, what? So quinces, yeah, this corner, this little corner here is gonna have quinces. Uh, that's, a, a, that's an apple tree that's gonna be moved in time. Probably destroyed, but we'll crop it a few more years. It's, you know, the plant's moved on, that tree doesn't belong. Uh, but we may as well crop it until it gets in the way of these quinces. Not to this is the quince I dug up and moved. This is the big tree. I dug this up. It took me three hours to do it. Um, I moved it here. I staked it. Uh, it's growing. Pleased with that. So that's the, you can move. If you, the more effort you take over it, the better. The better root ball you move, you know, the happier it'll be. And you need to prune it back quite hard to balance the roots with the um, to balance the branches with the with the roots. But yeah, it's done okay. And this, by the way, uh, people occasionally ask about this. This is the pear um, that Julia grew from a pip, and this is from the funny old pear tree that's outside the um, the Royal Oak Pub in Winchester, which we quite often drop in if we're out that way. Um, we are clearing some. Uh, hazelnut here. This is a it's a long story behind this, but this is a, this was a, uh, a cob nut that we were looking after for somebody else. But it, it come to nothing. This is a, a fine apple. This is an Irish peach, and this is a splendid specimen of it. Although this is our neglected little corner that we're trying to catch up with. Uh, as you can see, it's carrying a very decent crop. Irish peach, beautiful apple, one of the rarest apples that there is. Fantastic flavour. It's one of the first apples to ripen. Not quite ripe yet. Um, once it's ripe, it's got to be eaten within a couple of days. It really is an apple for a community. Uh, this is again uh, a case in point. Miller's seedling. Zero fruit. Packed with fruit despite heavy thinning. And you can see that branch is supported. If that branch wasn't supported, I'm quite sure it would have snapped by now. But what I really wanted to talk about was the peace orchard. 
um, Peace Orchard, Peace Meadow. We, I just called it, I was just here one day. I thought, what am I going to call this? And I thought, it's the Peace Orchard. Um, that does his name, I don't want to go on at great length. This was a neglected area. We weren't sure what to do with it. Eventually, we decided to plant it up with widely spaced peri pears on seedling rootstock uh, to grow into 40, 50 feet tall trees that would go on yielding fruit, hopefully for you know a couple of hundred years or until the end of the world, whichever is the sooner. And uh, anyway, here's one I've just planted. Uh, peri pear, thorn, organically produced. That's just been planted this year, that's doing okay. And in between them, we've got all of these wild flowers. And um, there's a massive number of uh, butterflies and stuff around today. We've, we've allowed the natural wild flowers to grow here, of which there are many. Um, we don't use any pesticide down here, except perhaps a very small amount immediately around the... Um, the trees um, and we mow through here partly this is where the mower has been taken through leaving swathes of um, of uh, wildflowers on either side letting them seed uh, letting them you know, produce seed and uh, drop the seed uh, there's a lot of um, insects around here I don't know the names of, of, of any of them hardly this is interesting, this, uh, I show people this um, in the past. This was a tall and beautiful um, peri pear tree, but uh, uh, we um, had a, um, a tree guard around it uh, during that horribly wet year we had, 2012. And um, anyway, it, um, it died. I. Uh, but there was a little bit of growth coming up from the root. What I did, carefully sawed it off, spared this. And this is a year's growth. It's over two feet tall now. I will graft onto that next year or maybe the year after. Um, yes, I'm trying to catch some of the uh, uh, moths and butterflies and things that were buzzing around earlier. Lots of crickets down here, um, oxide daisies, nettle, red campion, someone told me what this is, what I forgot. Um, it's a bit of wild fennel, uh, uh, fennel has escaped here. We don't want a bit of nettle here. Uh, we're not quite sure how we'll eventually manage this. We think probably a certain amount of Ne uh, studied neglect and chaos will be um, part of the plan. Uh, biodiversity uh, is the key. Here's um, a peri pear. This variety is called Winnell's Longden. Now that's where my head comes up to. So that's about six feet. Um, let's back off with great care, avoiding. Uh, injury. Uh, it's about 12 feet uh, and it's made about two feet of growth this year and this will be the first crop of um, peri pears we'll have had. And I'm going to combine these all being well. I'm going to crush these. Uh, these are bitter, tannic, uh, astringent peri pears, rather right? Winnells Longden. I'm going to blend these with some uh, probably burr hardy pears, um, some conference commies, uh, in order to uh, get maybe one, just one gallon of perry uh, to put in for the um, the Putley uh, festival. So I put an entry in, it means I get to taste all the others. It's a peer reviewed thing. This pear review, or peer review, pear review. Uh, this is um, brandy, uh, this is variety. I planted two of these. Uh, again, it's on seedling pear. Uh, this I uh, planted about three years ago. It's grown about seven, eight inches this year. It did have a good crop on it, but I pulled them all off except for that one. Um, I might carefully snip them while I didn't pull them. And again, this tree was waving around nice stake. I don't normally stake trees, but this was waving around a bit. And that brings me to uh, another point over here. 
Uh, by the way, the last time I saw a snake in the orchard was round here. A uh, grass snake, quite harmless. Uh, I've been watching out for that, watching out for snakes anyway. But I haven't seen one for five years or so. Um, yeah, here I'm quite pleased with this. Now this is um, this is a seedling pear rootstock. Um, this is three or four years it's been growing on. I bought them in, grew them on. If I could have bought in better, bigger seedling pear rootstocks, I could have got ahead quicker, but it was very, very difficult to get them at all. And, um, and this is, uh, obviously that's the signature of the old cleft graft, the saddle graft there, saddle graft. That's a bit that was uh, put in. And that's the growth it's made. It's made uh, nearly three feet of growth. Um, I allowed these um, uh, side branches to grow, but now it's become clear that this has taken very well and growing. I've cut them all out. There they are on the, on the ground. But no, I've tied this in, and this is, I've, put, so I've, put, so I've finished the video here. Beware of this. If you do a graft, if you graft um, a, a bit of uh, a cyanwood onto a vigorous, strong uh, stock, and you're fortunate it takes one, it grows very strongly, and you've got a really long growth like this with all this leaf to catch in the wind like a sail you may go out one morning and say a few very bad words because it snapped this is still strengthening uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful that this will be a really big tall tree i'm i hope that i'll live to uh see this uh, uh yes i'm on a diet i'm trying to do some exercise <laughs> i i i, I uh, if i live to be as old as my father is who i'm glad to say is still with us I live to be as old as my father. I hope that this tree will, I hope I'll live to see this tree 40 feet tall and yielding um, 10 gallons of perry uh, or more. Uh, anyhow, yeah, um, that's about all I've got to say. Uh, so here we are with our um, biodiverse uh, meadow. It looks a bit messy, it is a bit messy, that's okay. Here's another perry pear, this is one that was put in earlier this year. Uh, Walcott Organic Nurseries this came from. Yeah, and it's, uh, this hasn't made much growth, but that's okay. All I want it to do this year is sort of survive and uh, put its roots down. In fact, it's made, you know, six inches of growth. This is Hendry Huffcap. Um, Perry pears tend to have very odd names indeed. Um, lots of uh, beasties of all kinds around here. And um, hopefully this place will act as a reservoir um, here's another uh, uh, peri pear I grafted earlier, Blakeney Red, and um, this one needs to be dug up and moved. Um, this is a, a long term. Uh, that's that's on pear, seedling root stuff. So that's going to stay. That's on a dwarf root stuff so that needs to be moved. And there's lots of uh, projects that you know didn't come to, uh, didn't work out. But we, we have got now at least a clear vision for this area uh, it's going to be uh, managed as a, a very biodiverse unsprayed wildflower meadow um, i'd love to have a pond here but this it, it, we haven't got any water source and it's too dry um, it, a pond is not possible but we would otherwise love to have a pond for wildlife um, so this area is going to be a, uh, a wildflower meadow um, with um, widely spaced peri pears and lots of uh, moths and butterflies and um, goodness knows what and possibly even a, a snake or two um, if we can persuade any to uh, come and live with us. Okay.